This conference will now be recorded. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America. To the stands, one one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. This is September 27th, 2022. Mitchell County Board of Supervisors meeting, 8.30 a.m. We have an agenda in front of us. I don't know if everybody's had a chance to look at it, if there's any additions or corrections. and need a motion and a second to approve the agenda. I'll move to make that motion. I've made a motion to approve it. Do I have a second? I can second it. Jim, you know, second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Item two, approve the minutes of the September 20th meeting and claims. Move to approve the minutes and the claims of September 20th. Steve has made a motion to approve the claims and minutes of September 20th. Do we have a second? Mark will second that. Any discussion on this? Roll call, Todd. Aye. Jim. Aye. Steve. Aye. Mike. Aye. Mark. Aye. Okay, item three, county attorney general discussion. Morning, Aaron. Good morning. Uh, I was going to, uh, I think last week I said I was going to look into that carpenter sewer issue. Um, got a little sidetracked last week with a lot of other things. Um, so I really haven't looked at that. Um, so I'll have to try and do that this week. Um, Again, I think the issue comes down to probably amending that 2080 agreement. Some of the research that I've done, talked to some other people. So it looks like that ought to be able to be done. The question I had is, I mean, to myself, I mean, is, um, lost my train of thought. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, I just, I, you know, I mean, the, the, the amount of documents are immense that go on this. A lot of them probably aren't particularly relevant, but some of them might be, so I kind of got to look through them. Because what I want to make sure of, or be reasonably sure of, is, you know, whenever you're tied in with the U.S. government or something on a mortgage, there's always strings, right? Well, even if you get a mortgage on your house, there's strings. They'll say, you know, if you add this, or if you tear this down, or you do this, or you do this, you got to get the consent of your lender, or else it's immediately due and payable, right? I mean, all mortgages contain things like that. So I want to make sure, for example, as reasonably sure as I can be, that if we amend something, that there's not some provision of some mortgage somewhere that says, oh, by the way, um, if you guys amend the terms of this stuff at all without our consent, everything's doing pain, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's what I really don't want to have happen. Correct. Yeah. I assume you guys don't want it to happen either. No. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Um, so I, yeah, I've done some work on it. I just not, you know, I just got a little more I want to do. Um, um, what I was working on last week was a, a lot of things to do with that uh, conservation issue. Um, I think, uh, I think at, at this point it's kind of been determined um, that uh, Bond Council, Dorsey and Whitney will handle that. I don't have any objection to that. Like I said, I, particularly don't know that it was necessary, but I'm, I'm never going to say going to somebody with that expertise is a bad idea, right? I mean, I'm never going to say that. I mean, you know, um, I think everything was on track, you know, I mean, I, I don't think there was really any issue from my end, um, but the lender and maybe some others thought, well, maybe having a bond council expert involved would be better, just like it might be. I'm not going to object to it. Um, cost you, I don't know, I think John Dano said five or $6,000. Um, but I think the banks lowered their interest rate, make up for that. So I think that's where we stand on that. Yeah. Well, it's something the bank requires. Way I take yeah. So. Yeah. And I did. I talked to Luke, last Luke Porish last week. And and he was like, well, I think what I sent him, uh, like a notice and a resolution. 
And he was like, well, aren't there certificates to go with this? Yeah, we, those don't come up the next meeting. Well, anyway, he thought, well, don't most, and I'm paraphrasing here, um, you know, don't most counties kind of uh, have bond council involved in this stuff? And I said, you know, frankly, most of the time, yeah. You know, he said, most of the time, a lot of county attorneys will just say, I'm not going to do this. Um, and I said, I think most counties probably do that. Um, I thought, well, it's, I can, it's not that complicated. I'll do it. I think Mark always kind of did it. Um, but it is true probably that most of the time there's like a bond council involved. And I, I suppose if you're a lender and you see, hmm, I'm usually, I'm used to John Danos or whoever at Dorsey and Whitley doing this. I kind of want them to do it. Perfect. It's kind of like when I do title opinions. Sometimes people say, I want Murphy to do the title opinion. I know you do a fine job. I want Murphy to do it. Or other times somebody will say, you know, Brian McPhail's my attorney. I want him to do this. Perfect. So anyway, I think everything's on track. Okay. 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 Anybody have any other questions? So I, we'll get, I guess if Dorsey's going to be doing this, are you going to... Are you going to be in contact with them as far as if they have legal stuff they want to have this board know that you can convey that or how does that yeah happen? i think that would i mean yes i'm willing to be involved in that and number two it's probably a good idea right okay i mean i'm I, you know i'm it's probably not going to be a situation where i like question John, Dan, you know, whoever's doing it, I shouldn't just say John Dan. I think it's going to be him, but it could be somebody else at that point. I'm probably not going to question their process because they truly are experts. You know, I mean, they, they truly are. Um, I mean, you know, so whatever they do, it, it, it's, I mean, I'll, it's probably going to be right. I'll look at it, though, you know, make sure. But also, this, we, somebody probably ought to look at it from your perspective, right? Or a supervisor's perspective, county's perspective. I mean, granted, that's what the other attorney is supposed to be doing, but things get a little convoluted when you get a bunch of communication going back and forth and somebody knows what's going on and somebody doesn't know what's going on, right? So to answer your question, <coughs> yeah, I think that would be good. Okay. Um, I think I'll, you know, Depending on how things, you know, go. If, if you move forward with this and have uh, uh, Dorsey and Whitney involved, and I think Dano sent out some kind of retainer letter yesterday. I think Rachel's seen it. I've seen it. I don't know if y'all have seen it, but but anyway, assuming that that's the process that goes on, you know, that they're retained, I will probably get a hold of John Danos and say, Hey, John, um, you know. Feel free to send things out to the supervisors or Rachel or whoever, but maybe copy me in on too. All right? All right. So this, you can legally describe to us what they are. Exactly. Yeah. Because you are a legal person. You can describe exactly what they are talking about. Yeah. And put it to us the way we would understand it. So, agreed. Well, can I make a suggestion? Well, you might want to consider just. Maybe in a week or so, I'll have a contact John Daniels at a time and have a phone call conference with him during your meeting. I used to do that in the past. Yep. Okay. In case you guys have questions, that way you're uh, talking one on one with him. Then. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, Lowell, you know, is going back uh, 20 some years. He's got, you know, experience with. You know, sometimes I'm used to doing things with private clients, you know, and I think, you know, well, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, we can't all get together, go call him at two o'clock this afternoon because that would be a violation of the meetings. But there, if you guys wanted to do that, be a good idea. There's no, I could, you know, I could get a hold of Danos ahead of time and say, hey, okay. when can you talk? Okay. For five, 10 minutes, yep. you know. When the board's in session, so I'll, I'll let you guys let me know if you want to do that. It's probably I would assume he'd probably be able to describe what he had their thoughts are and ideas in less than five minutes. Yeah. Well, okay. I would kind of think so. 
I remember he's a, he's but, a very busy guy and would we specify Tuesday morning when because I we've talked back and forth and it's days before we get back. what so, I'd fly I would it would be good to probably try and set something up and nope. say John we're, we're gonna call it this time you know yeah, yeah. So, so you're willing to take care of that? I am, if you want to do it. I mean, I, I won't do it unless, I, you know, you guys say, yeah, we want to set time aside to do it. Okay. I think it'd be okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You want me to go ahead and do that? Yeah. I'll go ahead and do it. Okay. Yep. Like I said, I guess I can't Thanks speak for it. I can't speak for his schedule, but, you know, yeah. he's always yep. pretty cooperative. I've dealt with him before. Yeah. Let's see how item 10 goes. Hmm? On the agenda, we'll see how item 10 goes. If right. item 10 can approve, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank All you. right. Gentlemen. Yep. Item four, sheriff update. Yeah, oh. Good morning, everyone. So, <coughs> unless you have questions for me or concerns, I don't have anything for you this morning. So. Okay. Well, that's we're pretty we're quiet over there. That because means it's quiet. I see the, yeah. the C. I met both. You and a deputy yesterday heading north. I thought maybe something special was going on yesterday. No, nothing. Two are shattered. Okay. So, yeah. But we're in good shape over there. So, okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank All you. right. Thank, yeah, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Item five department head discussion. I have something I would like to say. As the auditor and elected official for Mitchell County, I would like to publicly address the situation that occurred last week. I have many job duties, one of which includes being the Board of Supervisors clerk. Sinansker State Bank showed concerns to me about the paperwork for the wetland project. The bank contacted Northland Securities and Dorsey and Whitney with these concerns. The bank wanted to make sure they had all the paperwork needed to process this transaction. I was contacted by both Heidi Cool with Northland Securities and John Danos with Dorsey and Whitney. As the board clerk, I forwarded the information to the board, county attorney, and conservation director. I was falsely accused by a supervisor and conservation board members of inserting myself into contacting another attorney regarding the loan. As an elected official and working for the people of Mitchell County, I find it in the best interest to take the, those phone calls and pass along the information to the board, county attorney, and conservation director. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other department head discussion? Anybody have any second thing? Nothing. Okay. Moving on to county engineer update. Not much for you this morning. I did finally get an update on uh, the Stacyville box cover project. It appears as though the uh, timeline for getting the boxes is extremely late. The late start date for the project was August 22nd. And we knew that we were going to have late materials anyway. And I think we had sent an email out saying that we were probably going to not charge working days because of that. But we got a letter yesterday day before that October 19th will be when the box culverts are actually completed. And that's assuming that the precast plants don't have weather. Those are cast outside. And so when it gets cool and stuff or if it rains, they've got to do extra protections there. So right now I have not charged any working days for the project, knowing that the supply chains have been a challenge for everybody in construction. Um, and so I'm going to try to keep a good eye on, you know, October 19th, where are we at with harvest? You know, I don't know where we'll be at. I know people are harvesting now. I don't know where the corn and stuff will be when that comes in, but we'll try to try to, to uh, start the project in a, in a time frame where uh, we'll do as little amount of, of inconvenience for the farmers as possible, but we still got to get it in before winter. Yeah, so. yeah. Biggest thing with that is I think that for the most part um, they can really knock these things out pretty fast. That the the you uh, know take the most time probably in finding the right circumstances for weather is when they pave that uh, concrete back in over the top. So we're keeping an eye on that timeline, and I'm not opposed to to suspending the working days and keeping that going until they come in. I don't want them to have to you know come in here close something down and then wait. We'll 
the way we've done in the past is these guys know when their deliveries come in and they can take stuff out pretty quick. And I know when I know in Worth County, and this is a little different different situation where it's on a gravel road, but they put a box cover in in a week and in, in a week and a half or less. Actually, it was probably less than a week. They didn't have any paving to do, but they had everything timed out just perfect when the boxes showed up. So we can do these rather quickly, but I just want to try to keep the inconvenience as low as possible. I'm not going to say we won't inconvenience people, but I want to minimize that as best we can. So for now, um, we're kind of on hold until we know when those boxes are in. We'll be in the, talking with the contractor on when a good start time would be for that. So just to give you an update on that project. So they're going to build the pipe for the box, you say, is it or is it built? They're all precast. They're they haven't all, been built yet. Okay. They're in the queue with all the other, you know, all this, See, bridge, thing, all this money mean, came out here a couple of years ago and all the bridges and boxes just started taking off and now these precast plants can't keep up. And then with the, the COVID and everything else, the supply chains were slowed down and everything else. And now we're kind of playing catch up. And, and so, yeah, what they'll do, what I think they'll do, what they've done in the past is when they know the boxes can be delivered, they'll plan everything so that they've got everything removed and the bases ready so that when they bring those boxes in, they'll be putting them in as they show up. So, mm -hmm. okay, uh, but we'll just kind of keep an eye on that a little bit. And if we have to, if we kind of see where harvest is, you know, we can kind of hold off a little bit too. I don't, you know, mid to late October isn't always the best for weather either. But uh, uh, the fortunate thing is, is that we're not going to have, I shouldn't say we're not going to, not likely that we're going to have frozen ground just yet. And so the really, the, the critical thing would be whether we've got freezing temperatures when we're trying to pour concrete. So, okay. Well, and again, if it gets cold, it's highly possible that maybe we could babysit the road top over winter. Well, and that's the and other thing too. Spring when it gets I think we can cold. probably they can also they can also put insulation down and keep the top from freezing, and then do all this other stuff too. But I don't see that it's going to be that big of an issue to get this thing put in. It'll be the paving that's going to be the the, the trigger yeah. here for. My concern is freeze thaw on that paving. You really don't want it. Well, weeks to freeze. We've been pretty lucky with that so far, but yeah, you don't want the paving to freeze. The, you get that shaling effect when that happens. If you're not doing it properly, you can. Correct. Where, where would the detour be? Would it be We're going to do the standard detour where we go up through March Avenue and around through the industrial park and then back out. To, yeah. That's, so, I mean, a lot of the truck traffic runs that anyway, but yes. going to the elevator from the north is going to be the challenge there. So, that bridge in town when they did that by Bellic store that was yep. during harvest too and yeah you had to go around but yeah. i mean yeah. it is what it is so yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll try to try to be as you know, like you gotta go a bunch of miles right right right, right. so you know, I think that will be, it is it happens you know yeah. it is what it is so. and i'm working on still closing out some of the projects waiting for some information from contractors yet and getting the other projects in the queue to go so there's no shortage of things to do that, that March Avenue, now that's city limits, correct? It's shared. It's shared. Yep. So when we pay that, when and if we get to doing that, which is getting pretty rough, it's getting rough. that's got to be a it's narrow too. Pardon me? It's it's narrow too. Yep. Because I'm putting that chemical plant in that new one. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of traffic down in that, I'm sure. I don't know. It was mentioned to me. So I told them I thought it was city it's shared. Yeah, it's a shared. shared responsibility. <clears throat> There's city limits about that, so they're responsible for half the road right away. Okay. If it's done, it should maybe be widened a little bit. Or possibly. It probably couldn't hurt if there's going to be more traffic there, but okay. consider the costs too. I mean, it's going to take some financial yeah. things to get it's to only a mile. Right? It's, well, it's about yeah, it's even a mile. It may be an even a mile. No, that sits kind of high, and it's only a 66 foot right away. So Correct. Tough. So it's yeah, going to be a very high road. It's tough to put four slopes on it and everything. Not maybe not impossible, but it would be difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll 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 take some work. So the city would share half the cost. Correct. Yeah, they'd have to be able to afford it. But. Yeah. yeah, it's too bad we couldn't have worked it's, with conservation, you know, wetland and used material. Not necessarily that so much, but I don't know. Do you know? And this is probably maybe behind after the fact, but that plant they're building right now, do you know whether that was, uh, I don't know if we could have qualified for RISE funding at the time, but are they bringing in new jobs with that or is it just kind of expanding? Would there have been enough jobs to qualify that for any RISE money, I guess? Yeah, I don't know if it's really creating more jobs. I think it's just moving. 
because if it would have been, there could have been an opportunity to maybe get some rise grant money for that. But okay. so I didn't know they were building that. that. Is that plans in city limits? So right, that right. But they could have the city could have gotten maybe some rise yeah, money to help with their half. So. Okay. But we didn't know about it, and I think we're behind the eight ball on that one. So, and if it's not bringing any new jobs in, it might it probably wouldn't qualify for any of that type of funding. So I'm not sure that that is. I think it's kind of moving. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, that's all I got for you this morning. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for Rick? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Item seven, approved liquor license for Sportsman's Inn and Grill LLC. So I'll just say that. quickly it's new owners of the staff. Okay. Owners of the staff won't tell them, huh? Okay. Look for a motion and a second to approve this. Move to approve the liquor license for Sportsman Inn and Grill LLC. Steve has made a motion. A second. second. Mark has seconded. Any discussion on this? Roll call. Mark. Aye. Mike. Aye. Steve. Aye. Jim. Aye. Todd. Aye. Okay. Item A. Discussion and action on Central Iowa Juvenile Detention Center audit. And that was a meeting I went to, and, and they had their yearly audit done. And that was emailed to everybody. But uh, I don't know. You could, I don't know if you guys had a chance to look through it. But the, the outcome is, is there was no questionable disbursements. The travel expense was fine. The minutes were fine. Deposits and investments were fine. So in other words, there was no everything checked out good. So. They just said that since we're a member there, we need to approve the audit report at our meeting. So, looking for a motion and a second to approve the Central Iowa Detention Audit Report. Motion to approve Central Iowa Juvenile Detention Report. Okay, Jim's made a motion. A second. I can ask you, I don't think I can because I was at the meeting. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, I can do it? You sure. Okay. I mean, I did it. Okay. I'll second that. Any discussion on this? Roll call. Todd. Aye. Mark. Aye. Mike. Aye. Steve. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Item nine. Approve HVAC pay request number four. Um, I kind of have a pay request. That's the original. I emailed you guys the information also. So this pay request is for 100 and, and it's for stockpile materials. And in the list that I sent you guys, it also has a, put together a tabulation of things that they have stockpiled that's in there also. So this pay request is for $135,594.07 dollars. <laughs> Been paying a lot of money. Are they going to move in someday? Or they said they would be doing it this week. So the completion date is until uh, April 23rd of, in the spring. So actually, they could start April 1st of 2023. And if they did it three weeks, they uh, that's that's the thing. So I think the biggest hitch was that they had to wait for the weather to cool off enough so they could shut shut down shut down the yeah. air conditioning right. system that's in the and the, the email I read office. from him last week stated that as far as he needed mm -hmm. cooler weather plus he did have some of the materials for the courthouse or for the jail to start so so as last week they proposed this week just mold in we'll see what happens yeah it'd be nice to because I'm gonna need a furnace pretty quick probably to heat the jail won't they yep and keep the staff warm. Yes. Well, I think the existing one's probably still working. Okay. So looking for a motion to approve pay request number three, pay request number four. I guess I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Steve has seconded. Any <clears throat> discussion on this further? Jim. Hi. Steve. Hi. Mike. Hi. Mark. Hi. Todd. Hi. 
Okay, item 10, consideration of engaging Dorsey and Whitney to facilitate a general fund loan agreement. That's for the conservation wetland. So we have a letter pertaining to that. It's worth 400,000 to develop a wetland out of the county home site. For a motion and a second on that. I'll move to make a motion to have Dorsey Whitney facilitate a general fund loan agreement. Okay, I've made a motion. I will second that. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, Todd. I got a question. Did I see one of the emails that the 6000 is going to come out of the conservation budget? Well, I thought maybe the interest on the loan was going to help pay for that. The way I read it, that the bank in St. Ansgar was going to adjust the interest rate to cover this. So that's the kind of way I took it. You're still going to pay them up front, I'm sure. You can't wait until. Yeah, and here, I, I, I understand what Mark's asking because I saw in one of the Friday emails, I think, I, I mean, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think Adam surely did say, that he assumed it would come out of uh, conservation's budget. I think, I don't know if that was the same. Anyway, and then also the bank was going to lower uh, the rate. Their, their rate, which should, I understand it, the numbers, which I may be wrong, but um, I think that lower interest rate was supposed to cover. But I, I guess the intent was if there's some overage, Adam did say that. Probably comes out of the conservation bunch. Correct. That's kind of how I'm, that's what I understand. Yeah, that's the way I understood it too. I wasn't trying to interrupt. I just don't, don't, don't. You wouldn't have to be on. I didn't see, well, there's a number of callers and it's not identified, so I don't. Are you there, Adam, or no? No, he must not. But there's no name for him, so. He did say he was going to go fishing with his dad, and uh, so they might be somewhere where. And I don't know. Instead of a loan, did they ever think of getting a line of credit? And then you use it as you need it instead of getting out for four hundred thousand. <coughs> I don't know. I don't have that answer. Would that be an option? Then you won't have to borrow the bond. You just. Get a line of credit at the, at the bank and then use it as needed. <laughs> Just an option. Is that, do you know if that's something a government entity can do? And I'm hard of hearing, and sometimes you guys talk oh. so soft that I don't exactly hear. Is that most. is that something a government entity could do? Do you know? With a lot, get like a line of credit. An open line of credit. Um, okay, that probably is beyond <laughs> my expertise. I could probably find out, but yeah, I, I, I did, my initial thought would be as long as you're within those lending limits, as long as the amount of the of the credit didn't exceed that number, I would almost think it's okay. But I don't know that. I don't know that. You know, the county's borrowing money is. I mean, I can find out, but I just don't. I don't know the answer for sure. Well, truthfully, we've already approved. To get the loan. I think what we're proving here is engaging Dorsey Whitney to facilitate, facilitate the general fund loan agreement. So I think we're beyond that part of the game, Mark, and probably should go back to what we're after here. Yep. Roll call. Todd. Aye. Jim. Aye. Steve. Aye. Mike. Hi. Mark. Hi. Okay. Item 11. Items of note. Meetings attended. Uh, last week I had a city council meeting and then also uh, Farm Bureau uh, invited me to one of their meetings and I just went there and chatted with them about county stuff. So that's all I have. 
I didn't have any. Well, I had the Sumter Iowa Juvenile Detention meeting, which we went over the audit. Uh, they're having a lot of trouble with staffing right now. They've got four people in there, juveniles on first degree murder charges. So they've got nothing to lose, but getting a fight every day. They used to have fights like once or twice a week. Now they have three or four a day. <laughs> They're staffing, taking with it, feel good. They used to lock that person in their room for three days, you know, give them meals and whatever. And now there's a federal disability rights act. They could not do that. They could only lock them in there for an hour tops. So they're really struggling with this, and uh, they, they're new $7 million addition. Won't be done until October 1st. And in there, there's going to be 20 individual units, which that's where they put these hardened juveniles in there, because then they can keep them a room in a public kind of a, an area, you know? What a deal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really changed in the last few months. They just said it's just crazy. <laughs> We don't have any of them from here down there. I don't think we have anybody in there. But yeah, that's it's yeah. Just think of the the, the youth that aren't hardened. Yeah. That yeah. they have to yeah. be, you know, they just messed right. up and had a problem and they're there and they have to be with that those yeah. people. Because right now they only have one common area, you know, for everybody, but when they get to 20 units, there'll be 20 common areas too to go with the rules, and that's what they need. They're going to be a little delayed on the construction too. It's supposed to be October 1st. It's going to be at least the 10th, they said, because of delays. So, yeah, I'm hoping they can hang through until that happens. But, and then I had a North Island Community Action Organization meeting, and uh, I don't know, they went over their budgets and everything, and. Uh, I have a survey that I'm going to pass out to you guys. You go online and do it. They want to know the needs of our county so they can get state and federal funding Thank you. to reflect that. So they wish all the supervisors would take this survey so they can kind of see where everybody's at. Uh, and they went over their like insurance going up and all their. All the stuff, but everything's pretty good as far as that organization goes. So everybody, please take the survey. And that's all the meetings I had. I had a Heartland Insurance meeting. It was our fall conference. They had six different speakers, and they're all very good. I had a wellness meeting, and I uh, got to the end of October to do our physicals and uh, complete your assessments. And the auditor's office are in first place, and where it last. I did As mine. Now. I did mine yesterday. Oh, maybe we moved up a slot. <laughs> or not. Yeah. I had the wife call the doctor's office for physical and the receptionist asked what doctor you want to see and she said the one with the biggest fingers. That's all I had. Uh, I had an um, economic development meeting. I was unable to attend, but I have the agenda in front of me and went and talked to the director, the assistant director, and she filled me in on uh, the derelict housing incentive. Um, I did notice in the claims that we paid out two more, so um, we're up to four paid. Um, Roughly, we have about 17,800 left. So um, she's going to put some more um, things on our website and, you know, just to kind of get it out there again. And and uh, and she also gave me a spreadsheet of that. I think we asked about a while back, um, you know, like, pictures before, during, and after, and uh, so this is what she's got here. She'd like this one back, but you guys can take a look at it. And a little discussion on the um, uh, um, industrial commercial spec building, um, and 
just it's it's available. So she wants to kind of get that out too. So because that hasn't been built, correct? What's that? That that has not been built. As a, no, as we a just have that, that money that um, right. And, uh, and well, I don't know if Jenny, if you wanted to add anything or. I, I think we've talked uh, in the past that like Riceville and Osage would kind of be in line for it, but Riceville, I, I don't believe um, they're not, there's just really nowhere for it to go for, to stay in the Mitchell County. So, but it's available to anybody. So, and that's it. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, item B, manure management plan updates. And we have two, one for Martin Farms, 5082 Rainport Avenue, McIntyre, and Friesen 5 Site, 2169 410th Street, Osage. Okay, thank you. Item C, public comments. Anybody have anything? Okay, hearing none, I guess we need a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. Move to adjourn. We a motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. And it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you.